I want us to think of the unchanging Christ. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. Near the end of his public ministry, Jesus gave the disciples what I call the 11th commandment. Love your brothers. Do not shade from that. Love them as I have loved you. Love them as the Father has loved me. Let us continue, therefore, to love one another in brotherly love. We are brothers from afar off sometimes. We are brothers and sisters with people from different denominations, and we share with them sometimes, and sometimes we don't share with them. When I was... Uh, teenager or late teen uh, living out in Oregon, somehow we got together with various churches that on a Sunday night after the evening service, we'd all travel to a different church in the vicinity, maybe some churches 15, 20 miles away, and have what we called singspiration time. And it was so-called run by the young people of the church, different churches. Uh, every church had a young person and a pastor on a board. And we scheduled where the, where the places to be, were to be each month. And every month we went out there and they provided a song leader and they provided a pastor with a devotional and uh, others gave testimonies and we sang songs and we got together and had an Easter breakfast sunrise service uh, out on the Westland High School football field in Oregon and had uh, three, four hundred people come to that. Never thought we'd have that, but we did have it. And then we had a banquet and a movie for uh, the young people later in the spring. We formed a baseball, softball league for the summer. We formed a basketball league for the winter and got notices in the paper every week. Uh, we had a going machine. And we came from the Presbyterians, we came from the, the Baptists, we became, came from the Methodists, and we all had our time together in the sharing of the things of the gospel of Christ. We maybe didn't always agree on some of the forms of doctrine, but we laid those things aside and we focused on, we were going to have a time of singing together and time together as Christians and of fellowship together and, and we made it successful. And it, it was a time in which uh, I remember one night we had to go some distance to a place and we didn't have a bus or anything. So our pastor loaded up his car in the front and he opened up the trunk and loaded all the kids that he could into the trunk and, and off we went. It was a rainy night, but everybody was happy-go-lucky. I remember I had a family with a very invalid son. The son couldn't fend for himself. You could see different movements in him, but they'd sit in the back seat of the church, and you'd stand up there at the edge of the pulpit, and you'd look out at the audience, and every once in a while, I would see a little slim smile on the face of that young boy. And I would see the peace and the joy that those parents had in that son. He was their son and they loved him. God had given them the grace and the love to carry on a son that what doctors would say, don't give birth. She gave birth and they loved their son. How long he lived, I have no idea. But those folks, I'm reminded of them. I don't remember their names but I remember them being faithful. And this is what God says to us. We are to be faithful to men and to women who are faithful to God. We share, we share in our lives with them the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they may not have the deep relationship that some of us people wish they had and that we wish we had sometimes but they had a love for Christ. 
and they followed Christ, and they loved Christ. And so Jesus had brotherly love. He had love for that, that woman that was taken in adultery. And he wrote on the sand, and all the men left, and the woman was left there by herself. And he says, where are your accusers? And she says, they've gone. And then he says, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's the command that God gives to us. God says, take your sins and lay them at the cross. I've nailed your sins to the cross. Everybody's sins have been nailed to the cross. And, and all you have to do is go to God and say, God, I've sinned against you. I confess my sins to you, and I ask you to forgive me my sins. And out of his love, and his love through Christ his Son, he will forgive you your sins, and he'll give you what I call a passport to key, kingdom of heaven. And you'll know that if you die today, that you'd go into the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the hope that we have, a hope that is steadfast and sure, a hope that is built on what Jesus has done for us, what God has said that he'll do for us because he loves us with an everlasting love that we can't fully understand. But he cares for us. He watches over us. He provides every need that we have. David Jeremiah is a great preacher. He has a big church in California. He has a radio program. He has a TV program. His program goes all over the world. He's faithful to God in all things, as far as I know. He wants the people to hear the word. He wants the people to know that, that God will provide everything that we need. And he told the story of a preacher from England in the last century. And he said he'd been out, the preacher had been out of town on a speaking engagement. And he was riding the train back into town and he began looking for his ticket. He couldn't find it. And uh, there was only one other man in the cubicle with him. And after a while, the man said, do you have some problem? He said, well, I, I can't find my ticket. And the man said nothing, and he said, well, I suppose in time you'll find it. And then the conductor came through, and the man wondered, what am I going to say? I don't have a ticket. And the man up front talked to the conductor for a few minutes, and the conductor concluded the conversation and walked away. He walked right past this preacher. The preacher said to himself, what's going on? And then the man up front said, don't worry about your, teach, about your ticket. He says, I'm the owner of the railroad and you ride free and I serve you tonight. And he never forgot that. He found love from a man he didn't know. And the man came and served him and gave him a free pass home. I, we find people giving to other people from time to time and giving because they may love through God. But God says we are to love one another tenderly and longingly. And so Jesus loved us with an everlasting love that, that never faded. It was always there. He carried, he carried it all the way to the cross. And in his last moment, he gave his spirit over to God. Everything that in his character, he turned over to God the Father, and his body died for three days. But Jesus had said, I will die, I will be buried as Jonah was buried in the fish, and I will rise on the morning of the third day. The third day, the angel came from heaven. He rolled the great stone away, and Christ rose from the dead, and he went off into the open, and he was seen by many as 500 people at one time. And he was seen by a man from, who was against him, 
And he was on the road to Damascus to get more Christians and bring them back and persecute them. And Jesus called from heaven, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul became the Apostle Paul and wrote most of the New Testament. So we, we see Jesus as loving. And we see Jesus as a great master teacher. Jesus was a good persuader. He could persuade the people that, that his way was right. Not in every case, but he did in many cases. And he knew the truth. And he spoke the truth. And it says that when he went, even as age 12, into teach the gospel, that he spoke as one who has authority. He knew what he was talking about. He knew what he had to teach the people so that they could see the way of life in the right way that God gives to them. And he taught the people in that way. Think of Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. It's Jesus' great document on his philosophy of life. He talked about the poor in heart, for they shall see God. He gave to them a way of life, and if they would follow that way of life, they would find joy and peace in the Lord Jesus Christ because they would be walking in the steps of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus was the teacher who was great. I attended a course in persuasion at the University of Minnesota one year. And uh, I asked the, the teacher who was the author of a book on persu persuasion, and I said, you have a whole chapter, or a big part of a chapter, based on the teaching of Jesus. And I said, uh, why did you just include Jesus in that? Because he said he was the greatest teacher anybody ever had. And we learn the principles of persuasion from what, what he incorporated into his own teaching. And he could teach and teach thousands of people all day long and they would listen to him. And then, then they would go off and follow him. And he saw the wheels of persuasion in the life of Christ. Christ gave us all that he might have life for us. He taught us how to live right. He taught us how to live at peace. He taught us how to live by resting in God himself. Trusting God for the things that we need. Trusting God for the things that we want. And the things that would bring pleasure to God and God pours them out on us. And sometimes we don't realize it, but it's right there. My wife and I, we see things on TV, places where we've been. Been in the United States, been in Europe and in England and other places. And we say, we've been there. We've walked in those places. We listen to the bells ring at, in England. We saw the statutes of men and, and women who were strong in leading us out of World War II and World War I. We saw the places where some of the leaders were underground leading the countries. They were all there for us. We've been to places where, where God was exercised in churches and people spoke the word from beautiful places. We've seen the beauty of the creation of God in all of life. And so we look to the teaching of Christ out of the scriptures. And he says, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for my people. I have come to save the Jews, but I save everyone who calls upon me. So Jesus is the great teacher, then he is the one who is unchanging in his power. After his resurrection, he said to the, to the disciples, I send you out into the world, and I send you with the gospel that I've given to you. I have taught you the principles, and now 
I'm going to send you out alone. And God was with him. And God was with the disciples. They changed the world in 300 years. She had great power. She had great authority. The boat was twisting in the storms and the disciples were concerned and Jesus stood up and said, peace, be still, and the waves stopped. And they're calm. He says to us, trust me. Believe in me. Believe that there's nothing I cannot do because God has given me all power. So he is the unchanging Christ. He never changes, but he gives us a way of life that never ends because it's his way of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity that we have of being together. And God, we know that your son never changes. He's always the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, God, we have in our hearts the peace and joy that comes from him. Help us to live for you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.